Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chisco Gaming, and in today's video, sponsored by the makers of Call of Dragons, we're gonna do a review of every legendary hero in the game to share with you the ones that I think really are a cut above the rest. And I used to not think that really any one pair was way better than anything else per se, their situational uses, no, no. Magrat and Zeta are just better than everything else, it just is true. You use them, and you know what I'm talking about. That's not to say you should use them as infantry in the front line, but the fact that they are marksmen and you can use them as mages is insane. These two are overpowered. They are the strongest hero pair in the game, and it's not even close. If you were to go and invest in one artifact, ever, it should be for these two. So, we're going to put them at S tier, and we're going to differentiate this list by saying they are actually a cut above the rest, and I think most people probably would agree with that. Now, the reason they are a cut above the rest is because, in part, they can be used with different troop types, which is crazy. But also, they are normal attackers. And the amount of damage they deal is just disgusting. So the best reports you'll ever get are going to be with Magrat and Zeta. Use them. Enjoy the easy dubs. And, uh, yeah, you, you pretty much have to keep using them. Now, I want to go and add other units onto here to sort of establish what I think good looks like. And I think at the A tier, I would put Goresh and Skogel as a great pair of infantry. And I know I'm sort of putting them in here as pairs that technically as individual units is the way each of these are ranked, but they are really good, as is your Lily and your Velen. And it's funny because I still find, weirdly enough, that my Bertrand and Tohar, I would put a tier below them. Now, maybe I'm just doing something wrong, but in my experience, just the area of effect damage absolutely slaps on the Lily Velen. It just does the work, man. It does the work. The Bert and Tohar, they don't. Not that they're terrible, but that every time my reports come back, I can count on Lily Velen's just being better. And the Goresh and Skogel here, I'll say this. They're the best infantry you've got. We're getting a moderate amount of merits and having a moderate amount of tankiness. A cut below them, you will find Madeline and you will find Garwood. And the thing about Madeline and Garwood is that they are tanky and they do what your frontline infantry are supposed to do. Now, this list is an open field list. So my goal here is to share with you what works in the fights that define the season not to just be like, yes, in all cases, including Rally and Garrison, and, 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 okay? No. We're not even really talking about Roots of War. Although, technically, that is open field, and Cavalry fit really weirdly into this list, specifically for that reason. Because if you are a backline disruptor, you can do disgusting things with Tobin and Urag. And I'll rank them at B, but also I'll point out that they, re they really, uh, they're not the front line. It's pushing a position. Okay, now, could be with army groups in the current sort of season we have going that maybe that's a thing that happens, but we're just going to put them in B for now. And that means we can sort of tear out the other cavalry as well. Like, I think that your um, prior season, Ferrandel and Theodore, are certainly a cut below what you've got up up here with Urag and uh, Tobin. And I think a cut below that, you've got like Bakshi and Emrus. And I might even need to have a like lower tier in here. We'll, we'll see if that's where we end up because I, I may need one more tier of differentiation here. So this kind of puts the new infantry, which I really want to rank, in a very weird spot. Like I would say Danfell is solidly a B for the open field. But I would put like Magro probably in like C or D territory. Like Magro doesn't give you the survivability that you need. It just, it ain't it. Um, I don't know. I don't, am I wrong here? I'd put a, him sort of like Nika. Maybe we'd say he's a cut above Nika. Maybe, right? We could go like that. Maybe that's more fair. I'm not so sure, but, but this brings us to some archers, okay? And if Mag and Zay are up here, where really should your Sin Frey go? Um, and, and this is kind of a weird one. 
because you could totally justify them being an A, okay? But I also could kind of see them being at the top of B in terms of their performance. Like, I don't generally expect my Sin for A to deliver me the kind of merits I get from Lily and Velen. We'll leave them here for now because they do work, but I think this might be an aggressively high rating for them. It's not too aggressive, but it's higher than I think they probably deserve. Which brings us to several marksmen and overall units. Now, I would actually say Kanara is a very, very good hero. I would probably put her all the way at the front of B. She is very good. As a hero, you get her early, open field. She's a bit of a monster. Um, the only reason she's not better is that, you know, you had this heavy Sin Frey synergy with this heavy Mag Zay synergy. So she doesn't get to slot into these newest combos. I mean, technically, I'm sure you could, but because she doesn't, I think, fit in as cleanly, there's not as much opportunity for her to sort of shine. Depends on how many marksmen you're using. Hosk, however, is super versatile. I probably would put him at B. I think he's better than he gets credit for. I'll put him at the end of B. You could argue that he's kind of a C. Um, maybe we put him at C. His counterattack's very good. There's really just like no denying. And his versatility's really good. But also like, I, I don't know. Depending on how you're running your marches, like he's pretty far from meta. Like in terms of marksman marches, right? You've got your mag Zay and you have your sin, right? And then maybe third string, you're looking at Kanara and Hosk together, right? And you can get great reports with them. Do, do not get me wrong. Um, but I think that represents their sort of power level clear, sort of cleanly. I think the value of Hosk is just how versatile he is. You can just put him in whatever combo and like you can do things with that. Um, which brings us to Nico. And I would put him a tier above the D tier for sure. I think that's perfectly fair. Thea, man, the thing about shielding, it's just so weird. I just don't know that there's a great pair for her. Like, you're, su you're sort of supposed to pair with mages for high skill damage, but, like, which mage? Your two legendary mages are already sort of accounted for. Like, well, your AoE mages, anyways. And, and Burt and Tohar, you're not really supposed to pair there. So I just don't know where Thea's supposed to go is the weirdness. You're, you're like supposed to use Celestials, I think, to pull that off. I mean, unless there's a Marksman combo that you're thinking of with Flyers, but I, I think I put her in D. And then you've got Indus. And there's like two groups of people. There are the obsessed Indus lovers, for whatever reason, they are, they, they look at her kit and they're like, wow, this is the best thing that's ever happened to the game. And then there's everybody else. And I'm not, I, I'm like in the everybody else category. I'm like, man, I do not have those goggles on where all I see is Indus is the greatest of all time. Like, I, I don't, I'm not that. Like, like there's Indus players who would put her above Mag Zay. Okay. And, and then there's like the whole rest of the world here. That's like, what are you guys talking about? Um, I don't know. I probably, where would I put it here? I probably would put Indus at D, honestly. Um, so, so why do people like Indus? Let's maybe talk about that. So Indus does a couple things. Um, Indus is going to make it so that you heal targets near where your enemy is. So hopefully there's stuff that you have allied near there. Um, and also, she makes targets take more damage. And it's that all damage debuff that's pretty good. She gives a little health. She gives a little unit capacity. She periodically takes less counterattack damage. I mean, I've seen people try to use her with inf infantry as well. And like, maybe there is this Garwood Indus synergy. Okay, like maybe that exists. Um, and, you know, you use the Deathless Vines and, and like you pop off. Maybe. I mean, maybe. I, I don't know, man. I, I, I want to understand the obsession. I don't. So this is how I would rank out the tier list. I'm sure there's a few things that 
I'll feel like I want to adjust at some point. But you've got your mags all the way up at the top because they'll get you better merit reports than literally any other marks you'll ever put on the field. Um, then a, a full tier below that is your Gordash and Skogel, not because they'll give you the craziest merit reports, but because they are for sure, I think, the best frontline infantry combo in the game in terms of their counterattack and resilience in, in pushing forward a line. Um, and, you know, Spirit Bone Torque is great. AoE damage from these mages is amazing. I mean, at the end of the day, like, yeah, Burt Tohar single target damage is great, but anytime you're getting value from AoE, just, bro, you're cooking with Lily Velen. I think we'll leave Sindrian and Fragar here for now. I think as a march, it probably is kind of a cut above the stuff you see down here. Um, and then we've got, like, your Kanara your Burton Tohar, as I mentioned. We've got Madeline and Garwood in here. Not, not as pairs, but I think as individual units. Tobin and Urag are here. We've got Danfell here for the open field. Then we've got Hosk, Rondil and Theodore and Magro and Nico. We've got our Emrys and Bakshi, Nika, Thea, and Indus. I'm not saying that you can't get value with the, uh, I'm not saying that you can't get value with Indus, but I am trying to really differentiate strongly between the different sort of heroes here. And it drives me a little bit nuts. And I know I'm guilty of this in the past, but I, it drives me a little bit nuts when the tier list is like, everything's an A or an S. So my goal was in part to like have a differentiation and not just be like, well, they're all good. <laughs> So this is my experience, but let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. I've battled a lot of seasons here uh, and pulled down a pretty moderate amount of merit. Enjoyed the vid, throw a like on here, subscribe, and um, if you want to see my artifact tier list, I just updated that. Card will be in the end screen. Uh, and until next time, you have fun smashing your enemies. Take care, everybody.